Thanks for joining us, everyone. Really appreciate you uh, not only taking the time to come to Integrate, but more importantly, give Vicki and I the opportunity to highlight some of the interesting things that we got going on on the east side. I think the most interesting thing and the biggest takeaway, specifically from today's presentation, is that this is the least technical speech you will probably hear throughout this entire conference. And I want to stress that more than everything, the least technical. Uh, Vicki nor I really uh, work in that space, Vicki more than me. But the interesting thing about this is, is where you locate your business can be one of the greatest determinants of your success. Communities that embrace future tech and future talent can provide an ecosystem of support that can help your business thrive. And what Vicki and I hope to do today is not only provide each of you with some of the insights about the emerging tools and resources that we as local governmental counterparts are bringing you to businesses to ensure that you continue to, continue to grow and thrive. Now, Vicki and I are going to touch on a number of things today, whether it's place-based initiatives, economic development tools, next generation infrastructure, public-private partnerships focused on talent development, and also highlighting the fact that we as your public sector counterparts are making generational investments in the shared resources we use to ensure that your businesses can continue to grow and that the investments that you make are the most sustainable that they can be. And in Macomb County, our journey to understand the implications that all these community trends have on business begins with talent. So Vicki, when I started my career over 16 years ago, one of the key things that we started to look into is the aging of our community. And specifically in Macomb County, we started to see some macro level trends about the aging of Macomb County. The fascinating things about these metrics is all the way back in 2007, one of the key benchmarks that we saw is by 2020, one in four county residents was gonna be at retirement age. So 25% of our population could retire. So what ended up happening is, is that little nugget of data that our team was able to mine out started leading us down a path of really understanding what were some of those trends happening in the community, and more importantly, what did it mean as far as implications on business growth and development. A few years later, we started to get a bit more analytical in the understanding our workforce, and we started to look at the impacts that it would have on major industry clusters, primarily with manufacturing. And one of the big elements of that is when we started to look at manufacturing, the 1,600 manufacturers in Macomb County that employ over 70,000 individuals, it was the realization that it was an aging workforce. And when there were major implications on everything from automation, robotics, the integration of the issue 4.0 technology, when we had an average age of a work for individual in that workforce of 57, we knew that there was a number of tools, resources, and analytics that we had to bring to the table to understand how we were going to have a sustainable workforce to serve those production-based industries. And then, it even got us to a whole nother level of when we started to examine the generational cohorts in the current time. And what started to happen is, as we looked at Generation X, as we looked at Millennials, as we started to figure out what was happening with Gen Z, we started highlighting a number of other industry trends that we knew could be a little problematic, to be honest with everyone here today. In Macomb County here today, we've got about 280 plus thousand individuals that are in uh, the baby boomer generation, 280,000. On the flip side, with regards to the millennials, we've got about 170,000. And when you squeeze all those statistics into an equation to figure out talent needs of industry, those are metrics that aren't the most favorable. And I know with some of these preliminary data points, we've played, painted a little bit of a bleak picture. But every single day, Vicki, myself, and our entire team in Macomb County are trying to balance that talent equation. And in Macomb County, it starts with the continued growth of our community. In Macomb County, 11 people every single day make Macomb your home. And when we have a community of over 900,000 individuals in a region that's thriving with over 5 million residents, we believe that we have the ability to meet the benchmarks of the needs of industry with regards to talent development. Aside from that, too, we are seeing incredible gains in international migration to the metropolitan Detroit region, where specifically in Macomb County, one in nine county residents is foreign-born. 
And that is injecting such a refreshing skill set and perspective into our community that is helping us grow and helping us create more welcoming communities and businesses in every single major industry segmentation. And as our population has continued to grow, it's also given us the ability to really change the sentiment of what Macomb County is and what we're going to become. We were once viewed as the bastion for blue collar. If you wanted to make something, you made it in Macomb. And we maybe made it better than anyone else. And what started to happen is, as we've integrated all this new talent, all this new population, our educational is changing and pivoting to where tens of thousands of advanced degrees and certifications are coming into our workforce to ensure that we have an adaptable skill set that can meet where industry is going next and help you create and innovate what's coming down the pipeline. And when you look at all these core driving metrics, it's leading to historic numbers in our workforce development. With over 440,000 individuals in our workforce, these are historic figures that are not only changing the way that business is done, but are giving us a competitive advantage to serve all of these emergency business segmentations that are here at Indy. And for each of you that are sitting here today, we know that you're looking for a chief technology officer. We know that you're looking for software we know that you're looking for HR person. And we know that some of you may even be looking for your next CEO. And we hope that we have a community that not only can be the preferred home and destination for all the talent that you need, but when we talk about people, the other thing that we like to do is we like to talk about place. And a key element about place is the physical location of where your business is located can be the most impactful determinant to success. And we say that not just as a tagline to get your business to locate to Macomb County. We say that because we have anecdotal ways that that has happened. What happens if you locate in a facility that has spotty internet connectivity, or even worse, has intermittent power outages when you juice something up to test the testing cell? How about if you locate in a facility that doesn't have adequate staging capability for sensitive material? Or even better, let's say you're an aerospace company and you're having an aerospace tool that is shipped to you. And upon that tool being shipped to your location, it's jostled in transit, and you have to fly someone out from Texas to fix that tool that sends the entire production line behind schedule three weeks. These are things that Vicki and I have had to deal with over the years. But because we are involved in this, and because we engage our industry counterparts, we have viable solutions that we can bring to the table, not only to connect you with the individuals that can be the strategic decision maker to fix your road, to enhance the power of it, to provide you with more broadband reliability. But most importantly, we're going to be a steward in that process and ensure that you have all the resources that you need. And the most refreshing part of these conversations is we've got Vicki and team in planning and economic development that is innovating and creating new initiatives every single day to serve where industry is going next. Vicki. All right, thank you, JP. So JP emphasized location, location, innovation. So I'm going to dive into this innovation and why that matters in Macomb County. Many of you guys are familiar with the pillars of Industry 4.0, but I want you to think about this as I go through these next series of slides to think how this is dynamically transforming the way we live and the way that our businesses operate. As economic developers, we don't have that background skill in cybersecurity or automation, robotics. We learn these as we walk through those floors with our manufacturers. We have actually had a great learning curve in this space, trying to figure out what do our businesses need to do, not now, but in the future, so that we can actually help guide them and get them to where they need to be. Uh, Tom Kelly is a, is a good friend of ours, and he always talks about the, the, the transformation, that cultural transformation, that shift that needs to happen with these manufacturers. So it's not just the technology, it's that balance of technology, but also people. We know in Macomb County that we've got some industries to watch. You know, going back to those nine pillars, those pillars will significantly change the way that our manufacturers do business. When we look at the growth we're having in Macomb County, these five industries to watch were there five years ago, they were 10 years ago, they were industries 30 years ago. But what's happening is that infusion of technology is dramatically changing these industries. And guess what? In Macomb County, we're, we're doing it. It's happening. We're seeing tremendous growth happening in automation as well as in 
and automobiles in the world of mobility. How not, it's not just about manufacturing the car anymore, it's all about the embedded software that goes into that vehicle. On the way here today, I heard GM just hired somebody from Apple. They're focusing now on software. They've been doing that, and it's happening in the county. Aerospace and defense. You know, that is one of our little key niches in Macomb County. Uh, we absolutely appreciate this industry for what they do to protect us. But the technology that's being embedded where you have a, a driverless tank or you've got AI making decisions for our DOD partners. Automation and robotics. This is not new to the world of industry 4.0. But what we find in this space is now you've got robots talking to other robots, robots talking across the world. And as JP mentioned with location, making sure you've got reliable infrastructure <laughs> and a broadband and Wi-Fi to make sure that that connection always happens seamlessly. Now, distribution and logistics. This is one that if we think of the wave of Amazon and what Amazon was able to do and transform our lives. I like being able to order a product and have it at my doorstep in two days. This growth in distribution and warehousing has impacted the entire country. It's impacted the world. In Macomb County, we're seeing a growth, about 55% growth, just in this particular area, where it's not just about the truck driver anymore, but it's how that product is inventory on, on the floor, where it's physically located at any point of time, to the point that it gets to your doorstep, and then they remind you, it's time to re-up on your subscription. And the last one, food and ag. When you talk about Macomb County and the history of who we were, we were farmers. We still have close to 400 active farms in Macomb County, but what we're seeing is that transformation dive into what's happening on the, on the land. We're seeing automation, we're seeing drones, we're seeing automatic systems that are planting and as well as picking trees, as well as our food producers, not only being able to grow the product, but the, a huge network of distribution across the country, getting their hands into the products of consumers. And technology is driving that. But with this comes the jobs. And what we're seeing, JP mentioned it, is that shift yeah. from your traditional blue collar. Anyone who knew Macomb County would say, you are a blue collar economy. We would say, absolutely not. In fact, we're closer to 60% white collar. When you look at these growing professions, these occupations, professional services, these are your engineers. We're seeing tremendous amount of growth happening in, in this space, not only do we have to upskill our current engineers because the technology is different, we've got to bring in that infusion of new. Healthcare, um, this is also one where we're seeing a lot of technology come into play, where you now have robots performing precision surgery. And a lot of that, you know, that technology resides here, but we've got that aging population, those baby boomers that require this healthcare piece. So it's not just about the nurses or the nurse practitioners. It is also about those that understand the surgery, the surgical aspects of it. And then I touch upon logistics. Mm -hmm. This one is huge. It's not going away. And in fact, when we look at the platforms that are being tested right now for this autonomous connected technology, it's happening in the trucking industry. Ultimately, they want to get to that space where, you know, similar to how we have trains, we have trucks that are able to get products and services to individuals at, at the loop of a time. So I'm going to stop here and we're, we're going to talk about the next generation. You know, what are we building out? Industry 4.0, that term was coined over 10 years ago. In Macomb County, we have just been riding the wave, getting it done. Yeah. However, we need to start thinking about what do the next 10 years look like? Because this is that generation that is just growing up with the technology. It is amazing to see um, how these kids will be able to transform what we know. Uh, we're finding that they are learning things at a much younger level. This generation is going to know about ChatGPT before you and I. <laughs> you know, it's a little scary, but they will figure it out. You know, when we talk about what we're doing in this space and how we're actually being part of the solution, we've got an effort called Fueling the Talent Pipeline in Macomb County. And that really is embedding industry with our school-aged children. So it goes all the way from kindergarten to 12th grade. But right now, we're, we're just hitting the iceberg of what that looks like, trying to reflect on the ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade experience so that they're out there actually seeing what's happening 
at these state-of-the-art top floors. But we really have a lot more work to do in this space. You know, making sure that that kindergartner, that third grader, understands that their world is transforming and that they are actually the change in that. So we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, we're excited. You know, with our McComb Next Effort, it is really looking to see what does the next 10 years bring, and it will be a forever dynamic change. So with that, GP, I don't know if we want to open the floor with Yeah, questions. so it's interesting, Vicki, because as we talk about this, not only meeting the generation gap, but myself and you, you know, you having kids that, you know, are getting a higher education, me having kids that are starting off in education and everything. When we look at some of these statistics with regards to careers that they aspire to achieve and fulfill, our kids are going to be working in industry sectors in occupational classifications that aren't normalized the way that business is done today. And it's fascinating. Obviously, when we look at that through the lens of parents, it's like, I want to find them a job here so they're going to stay here and everything will take care of me because I'm old, which is a good thing to keep a stable population. But also important to that equation is we want to ensure that we have the educational resources in place to incubate those young children so that K-12 through system then can transition them off the higher education opportunities that then have roots back here in Macomb County so that when they're looking for internships, when they're exploring opportunities for job sh shadows and job shares, that they're having in our community and that our children see the opportunity. Yeah, you know, JP, you mentioned this as McDonald's just rolled out their fully autonomous McDonald's. Yeah. So their first job will not be at McDonald's. So it will be very interesting to see what, what comes up with this. We've got a plan in Macomb County, and that is as being your business partner. You know, we're, we're walking through this with you, um, but being able to provide you know, such uh, support services, such as assessments, working with our partners. Vicki, um, the other thing I, I wanted to touch on real quick, too, as we're wrapping up here, and yeah. Vicki and I will be here to answer any questions, and if there's anything that you want to shout out at us for the next two minutes here is the logistics. And when you brought that up, that is probably one of the most interesting things in a region our side with all this activity and innovation happening. That movement of goods, services, products, and individuals is critical to having a vibrant economy that can continue to grow and be elastic. Because when we looked at it with the whole notion of historically how production happened in Macomb County, it was a very rigid point-to-point -point ecosystem. Now it's becoming so much more elastic and so many different variables are being integrated in there that whether it's just in time, that whether it's product innovation, that entire product pipeline of concept to consumer, I think that's something that we not only can help respond to, but we can really help pivot and provide your business with more and more solutions on that. Yes, and so we'll leave it with this closing note. Uh, we do have a booth here, uh, booth 716. We also have the team from Planning and Economic Development that can help really give you that deeper uh, support that you're looking for as you are in this Yep. And the last thing that Vicki and I really want to echo, the best thing about working with us is you're never going to get an invoice. That's the great thing about being the government. Yes, there's a lot of bureaucracy, less, there's a lot of rigidity, but our team is in place not only to be that steward. I will be the first one to admit, yes, we are bureaucratic. Yes, there's a lot of rules. Yes, there's a lot of regulations. But the reason that we have such an inspiring team is that we know the intricacies of those things. And whether you need a stormwater permit or whether you need to understand a planning and zoning provision, how it might impact you know, a testing facility that you want to locate. These are spaces where we have some expertise. And if you just call us, I think we're going to be able to save a lot of people a lot of headaches along the way. And everything. So again, we really appreciate you taking the time out to listen to what Vicki and I have to say. Please stop by booth 716. And I think most importantly, Go get some lunch because apparently you're all late to lunch right now, too. But on behalf of Vicki and myself, we really want to thank you guys, and we're around to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh we have a question. We do. Yeah. Absolutely. Our fueling the yeah. pipeline initiative is a key component of that where we're trying to not only bring existing companies that have dynamic workforce to kind of solve those solutions, but as Vicki and the team are trying to do is connecting with the educational partners on the K through 12 side and also our community colleges. Yeah. And so the, thing, you know, the question was, how are we attracting talent? And you know, part of that is helping us be that place where, where that talent, those individuals want to move to. And so when you look at our ultimate strategy, quality of life, 
which is sometimes the unforgotten the forgotten thing yeah. becomes really high on our list of priorities. So how do we make a space that is accommodating that next generation that has all the amenities, whether it's the parks, it's the art, yeah. you know, it's across the board, but it's that quality of life where they want to live in the home. We're also bribing our friends and family to have more children. So we're getting the red light, everyone. We'll be around to answer some questions, and we really appreciate you guys sticking around today. Thank you so much. Thank you.